Greetings and peace. I hope you and yours are doing well today, wherever you might be watching or listening to this from. Now, the uh, topic of education I would like to do today is on Muslim Freemasons and their impact on world history. Now, the reason I chose this topic is because Islam and Freemasonry are often misunderstood communities in the world. I want to show the world that both Masons and Muslims are good people who are loyal to their faith, fellow man, and nation. Their impact on history is also valuable. And I also have made an extensive video covering Islam, Freemasonry, the Holy Quran, and why are they compatible. And uh, please check out the link provided at your own convenience. And the reason I would like to cover this is because nobody talks about Islam and Freemasonry at times where it's needed the most. I've seen so many other programs out there, uh, different types of podcasts, different forms of education, but nobody addresses the topic of Islam. And I want to make this video so we can make the Muslim brothers may feel welcome within the brotherhood and also to eliminate any misconceptions the general public might have about both groups to show that they're just they're just like you they're your neighbors they're your friends they're your brothers uncles cousins etc so this is needed to talk about things that are avoided talk talked about all right so i want to talk about different uh Masons that were also Muslims that had a significant impact on their peoples and their history. So the first one I would like to talk about is His Majesty Habibullah Khan, the Emir of Afghanistan. Now he was a very progressive leader. He had an idea of, let's say, he wanted to create a progressive society in Afghanistan where the criminal justice system, health care, education, all of that was reformed under his watch. And even during the times uh, the British colonialism was going on in that area, he had maintained great relationships with Britain and was also made a brother in uh, Calcutta at a lodge there. And um, he, he made a significant impact because... He, during World War I, he was able to make Afghanistan a neutral party, which had greatly stabilized that region. Otherwise, besides the Middle East, the subcontinent and the, uh, like the Eastern Asia, Asian half would have fallen into war too. So Afghanistan was a vital position to have remained neutral. And still to this day, with the war going on today, it's a very vital geographical location. So... He made a big impact in history by sta stabilizing that part of the world so the war did not spread from Europe and some parts of the Middle East to the rest of Asia. So he, he is known for that. And um, I would I really commend him and to tell all brothers that this is what we are and this is what we do to help our people and to stabilize the world and to make a difference in our communities. And he was just a progressive leader who helped Afghanistan by building schools, bridges, education, health care, past criminal reforms. And that's why I seen him as the first person I wanted, wanted to highlight. Now, moving on, I'd like to talk about Sir Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan. Now, the Aga Khan family, it's, they come from the Ismaili Shias. And they're descendants of the uh, old man of the mountain, Hassan Saba, which, which have founded the uh, Assassin's Group. And they have a particular branch of Islam where they have their own lineage and their own way of following the faith. They're even different from your mainstream Shia Islam. So he was the 48th Imam of the Ismaili Shias. And he was also a brother, and he used his influence with the British Raj at the time when it was it had colonized the subcontinent to propose the creation of Pakistan and the two-nation theory because at the time, during the last days of the British Raj, there was a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, 
guess there was a lot of like destabilization going on and with the Hindus and the Muslims so he had proposed along with Qaeda Azam and um, Allama Iqbal the two nation theory that Muslims should have their own separate nation and due to his influence and efforts along with the other leaders that were in charge Pakistan came into existence because of his efforts and his uh, di diplomacy with the British and whatever recommendations that he was able to put f forwards towards them and his modern day descendant which is his highness Aga Khan IV which is the current Imam of the Ismaili Shias he is still doing great things in Pakistan such as schools, universities, um, healthcare, education all paid by his charity and, and Pakistan is, is a significant geopolitical power and has made an impact in world history because of the efforts of this brother who had proposed the creation of it at the time the subcontinent was being partitioned so I saw him as somebody that was worthy to mention now moving on I would like to talk about brother Rene Gunan sorry uh, if I'm mis mispronouncing that so he was a metaphysical Sufi teacher from France and he was the founder of the traditional school. He saw Islam to be compatible with Western life in his decision to convert but preached unity of all peoples with his emphasis on all being connected in a metaphysical state. He is known for impacting history by bringing East-West together with his writings. Now the reason why I saw Brother Rene as a um, a worthy brother to mention is that he is somebody that made the effort to study all faiths and to see the world outside the box and to bring people together and the reason why he found Islam to be compatible with Western life because Freemasonry and Islam both teach you from the Western point of view is that you have to respect the country in which you live in so whatever country you live in could be anywhere in the world as their resident you have to respect their laws their systems their rules and regulations and you have to respectfully abide by them and we have the same mentality in the West so that's why he found Islam to be compatible with Western life in his decision uh, because he also taught not just Islam's like the, the Sufi aspect of it but he also taught Hinduism and he also taught uh, Gnosticism, which is the uh, spiritual branch of Christianity. So he, he was also an influencer in world history because his writings and his words and his knowledge would reach influential people at the time, especially when such big decisions were being made in the era of the 1940s and 50s and 30s and so on. So his, his words like were very powerful. So they say the pen is mightier than the sword and this guy and this brother he proved it to be so that the pen is indeed mightier than the sword and anyone that we can influence with our love, knowledge, light wh whether we can put it on paper or orally we should definitely do so to benefit whoever we can benefit it from because if one person gets impacted by what you did then that means you fulfilled your life's purpose of what Almighty God put you here to do. And that's why I found Brother Rene and his teachings and his love for bringing everybody together. I found it to be a very, very worthy brother to mention. Now, moving on, I would also like to mention Brother Vedat Deloke. So, hey, Brother Deloke. He was the mayor of Ankara, Turkey, and he's also a world-renowned architect from Turkey who created the Islamic landmark in Pakistan known as Faisal Mosque. Now, this mosque provides room for 10,000 worshippers and millions of tourists from around the world. Deloke's work is still impacting the people of Pakistan in religion and tourism, which is bringing people together. Now, Brother Deloke is a very, very special brother to mention because his architecture that he left behind, you look at Fasl Mosque, I had the privilege of visiting it recently, 
and it's a beautiful piece of Masonic architecture and landmark that he has left behind for the world to enjoy. And I would say that uh, him also making an impact in the country of Pakistan and also his work still continues to make an impact as it brings people from all over the country and all over the world together at, to enjoy this landmark and to be have moments of peace and fellowship together. And if any Muslims like had any misconceptions about Freemasonry or vice versa, they can have this common landmark that they can enjoy that this landmark and Masonic architecture and mosque was created by a Muslim brother. And this is what, you know, things like this should unite us and eliminate the misconceptions against the world that you and I have something in common with each other and we can get to sit down and get to know each other. So, in times of great misinformation and great hate, Brother Deloque's landmark and architecture and, and um, his background can still be an, an impactful force today. And I would tell Muslims and Freemasons who have misconceptions about each other that you look at this landmark and you both have a part in this because it was made by a Mason and a Muslim and it's enjoyed by all. So... If you ever get the chance to visit Islamabad, Pakistan, make sure you go check out the King Faisal Mosque and you would really, really enjoy it. So his his work is still making an impact in that country and in the world. Now, my most favorite or the most renowned brother that I would like to mention is Jamal al-Din al-Afghani, a Sufi master teacher and scholar. Now, Brother Afghani was a Sufi revolutionary. He wanted to advance Islam into the modern age, and he wanted to eliminate all forms of European, like colonialism, that had etched into those parts of the world. Now, the thing about Freemasons is that we are free thinkers. We don't hate anybody, and every person has their own special love for their own country and their own religion for their people to prosper. Now, the founder of Islamic modernism, he had advocated religious and sectarian unity. He is known as Serap Serapis Bey by uh, Madame Blavatsky because she had studied under him and before finding her own society, he was one of the master teachers uh, that she had referred to as Serapis Bey, who from the Brotherhood of Luxor, they had taught all these uh, people that were flocking to them for knowledge and light to the east and he brother Afghani had also preached unity between all races and faiths and made extensive efforts to unite everybody he himself is a founder of a lodge and um, also in the winter of 18 no uh, let me see I believe 1882 or 83 he, along with his uh, disciple, who's also a brother, Muhammad Abdu, they went to America in the Chicago area to spread the air, spread the ideas of pan-Islam. And they had also taught the parents of Noble Drew Ali. And Noble Drew Ali came to be the first person in America to establish an official Islamic presence with opening the Moorish Science Temple of America in 1916. So even Jamal al Afghani had a hand behind that because he was the one that influenced his parents and taught his parents with his disciple Muhammad Abdu. And then that carried on with his parents teaching him and that that's where the whole Moorish movement started in America. And <clears throat> Brother Afghani had great ideas about uniting people and not being, um, let's say strict to one individual faith because what he teaches us is that the true Freemason masters all cultures and religions of the world so wherever you are put you adapt to that environment and you learn from it and you don't show any form of prejudice bigotry hatred because that's not what the brotherhood stands for you know we are who we say we are by being lovers of mankind and of each other and of helping this world and our communities. That's who we are. Moving on, I would like to talk about Brother Muhammad Abdu. He was a disciple of uh, Jamal al-Afghani that had studied under him. 
was also a, a brother and he had also went with him in 1882 or 83 in the winter to the U.S. to teach the parents of noble Drew Ali so they could establish the first Islamic presence in America known as the Moorish Science Temple of America. Now, Sheikh Abdu was an Egyptian Islamic jurist. He was a religious scholar and liberal reformer, regarded as one of the key founding fathers of Islamic modernism. And he teaches us too that uh, Muslims should, uh, they should go to like uh, Christian institutions, they should learn from them and vice versa. He taught us that the modern Muslim, because we see Islam and Judaism as people of the book, and we see those as revelations of Almighty God too. And the Holy Quran is the final revelation in our eyes. And he believes that we should learn and study from all of them. And I can relate to Brother Abdu's example because myself as a child, I would go to the Bible classes and Quran classes on the same day because I wanted to learn from everybody and apply those elements to my life. I did not have hate in my life or in my heart for anybody. And that's the thing that Muhammad Abdu emphasized that we need that today in order to create peace. Because we get separated from each other on the concept of fear. That this person looks differently from me and believes different from, from me and that creates disunity. And anything that creates disunity in today's world is ungodly. Because that takes you away from the concept of loving each other, your neighbor, your family, your friends. And we have to get out of this illusion of fear and realize that we're all the same. We all have the same hopes and dreams. We all want the same for our kids. We all want the same for each other, for our families. And realize if we sit down together, you go to the train station and see everybody of all complexions sitting on the train together, going to work together, their kids go to school together. So how different are we really from each other? And that's what he emphasized, and I myself have been an example of that in my life, that just put the fear aside and learn to work with one another, because in this life we're all a reflection of each other and we're all walking each other home. And Brother Muhammad Abdu is just, he was a wonderful scholar and a philosopher, and he did a lot for his people to reform Islam with modern ideas and to resist European colonists because you know Masons are they have love for their country wherever you find them they their respective countries they have love for their land because that's what they choose to serve is their nation and their people and he was also he was in, uh, initiated into the Ka Kakab al Shark Planet of the East Lodge in Cairo and uh, he was a master of it too and they just had built it Egypt into a modern day reform society at that time and his influence still carries on it still carries on because he's remembered and anybody that's remembered is alive forever okay moving on I would like to talk about Abd al Qadir al Jazari now this brother was a noble as you can get he was a very noble human being and he was a Sufi religious scholar and military leader of Algeria who had successfully united all of the tribesmen of Algeria to resist the colonialism of France because at the time the French they had a scorched earth policy of Algeria and <clears throat> see that's in today's world we could see that there's selective outrage where if anything's happened in a certain country uh, especially in any European or Anglo-Saxon country there's a uh, everybody puts up the flags and in their profile pictures but they don't forget they don't talk about the things that happen in history or that are still happening today so towards Muslims and towards the East Eastern peoples I see that to this day there's still a selective outrage system where if anything happens there, you're not supposed to feel bad for them. So, Brother Al-Qadir, he, he, he resisted against that idea. And he taught him what it meant to be a real believer and a real brother of the craft. Because any time that they were, he, they were captured Christian um, captives from the French side, he would always treat them with the utmost respect and honor. 
as taught by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on how to treat war captives. And this had earned him such recommendation and honor and like such a praise from his, uh, you know, Western opponents that they began to respect him because he showed his character as a brother and as a Muslim that you can destroy me, destroy my land, destroy my people, but I will still be better than you because I will not stoop down to your level. And this was very beautiful and his legacy continues to live on as he had also expanded the brotherhood into the Middle East besides Algeria. So he had spread masonry, Islam, and the ideas of tolerance that we should all respect each other as he had also defended Christians from mobs and other places during his time as a leader, as a Sufi reformer and leader. After everything he, he went through, he still chose to be happy, keep smiling, and chose to defend Christians and non-Muslims wherever he could. And that's why I see him as somebody that has made a significant impact in history. Because after his life was over, that's when the French colonialism had started to decline and stoop down in North Africa. So it's because of his efforts that those changes took place. And North Africa is what it is today. So uh, this brother is to be commended for his efforts to help his peoples. I would also like to talk about Saladin or Salahuddin al -Ayubi. He was the leader of the Third Crusade of the Saracens, the Islamic group that had overtaken Jerusalem after 88 years of being occupied. Now He was the founder of the Ayyubid dynasty and a noble military leader who fought against the Crusaders. He was a noble man who gave Christians safe passage from Jerusalem and protected their relics and places of worship. And he's also recognized as a brother because of his like relation with Richard the Lionheart and uh, treatment of Christians, which makes him known in history as the man that he was. So as a brother, his priority was to serve and protect his people. But at the same time, he was also a diplomat. And you see that just like how in the American Civil War, brother Masons from all sides, they spared each other's lives. So Brother Saladin was in the same situation and so was Richard the Lionheart where they always spoke on the level. And anytime Richard got sick or Saladin got sick, they sent aid to each other and check on each other's well-being. So they hailed from the same esoteric school if you... Uh, research a lot of the Arabic Masonic tales of that area. These two were brothers and through their efforts the Third Crusade had stabilized a bit regardless of all the carnage and chaos that had took place in that time. They were able to still bring some stability after all the warfare and Saladin made sure that once everything was done that all the Christians were protected, given passage to do what they needed to do, their relics, places of worship, so that's what a real Muslim and a real Brother Mason would do, is to look out for his fellow man, even if they believe differently from him. Now this hero is often overlooked, and I wanted to make sure that he was recognized for his efforts in society and the world as a whole for being such an impact on world history, where to this day, his force and his name is felt in the world. I thank you all for watching my video presentation. I uh, hope uh, I covered everything that I was supposed to. I thank you for giving me your time and the um, consideration for watching what I had to offer and to help me bridge the gap between Islam, Freemasonry, and the rest of the world to teach everybody that, you know what, we're all the same and all of our Masonic Muslim brothers that existed in history, they worked to make an impact not just for our Muslim people but for everybody in the world where their presence and their impact and their stories and their pains and successes are still felt today to teach us that no matter who we are what we look like wh where we believe what we come from where else in the world do you see this where we can all come together and love one another and that's why I believe the world can live can live and learn from Masonic values as these brothers did that I mentioned in my presentation and how they taught the world in terms of loving one another and leaving a legacy behind where you're always remembered 
So I thank you again for watching my video. If you have any questions or concerns, my email is listed here. So please uh, send me an email and stay in touch if you have any other further su suggestions or videos I can work on. And I thank you again and I pray you and your family have a wonderful rest of the holiday season and New Year's ahead as we approach 2020. So thank you again for giving me your time. Brother Mustafa Kamal is also a great leader that I would like to talk about. Now, Mustafa Kemal was the president of the Republic of Turkey. So he was basically had spent his life in the last days of the Ottoman Empire. And um, as, as a field marshal in the military, he had also established the Republic of Turkey. And that's the transition that took place from the Ottoman Empire to the Republic of Turkey was because of the efforts of Mustafa Kemal. And... Ottoman Empire was more of a religious theological society and he had made Turkey into a modern secularist society that had the freedom to think to do reforms in healthcare, education, politics, religion and Mustafa Kemal had really stabilized Turkey after the events of World War One. Where, where it came to be known as the force that it is today and such a strong geopolitical power because of the way that Mustafa Kemal had set things up and reformed it from the Ottoman system to the modern Turkey, Turkish secular, secular system where everybody had the right to practice and do what they pleased as long as they were in respect to the laws of the state and uh, according to respect for each other's human rights. So he is regarded as the father of Turkey and helped bring them from the Ottoman Empire days into their modern days of being a strong power and a strong influencer both in Europe, in Asia, and all over the world. Where to this day, Turkey is still being used for strong foreign policies and strong other leadership uh, situations. So... The credit for that goes to Brother Mustafa Kemal because for because of his efforts, Turkey is still a significant part of history today and is still continuing to be a significant part of world history as it was in his time as he was bringing them into transition into a more modern state of being with in, which uh, would be compatible with the East and the West. So we have to give him credit for that and for his impact and contributions to history and humanity and to bring his people into a more prosperous future.